principle. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths Subscriber Craft Reviews. Now I know what you're thinking. Borderwise, why are you recording at 12.30 at night and in the morning? Uh, to which I reply, how do you know when I'm recording this um, and what are you doing in my house? Well, the reason I'm doing that is because... Uh, one of the makers of this ship is about to go on a very long trip and he has uh, nicely asked me to get this video out before he goes and frankly like I'm taking that as a challenge so here we are it is 12:30 uh, in the morning I am recording thankfully my flatmate is out so she's not gonna be bothered but yeah here we are and the second thing you are probably thinking is otherwise um, what happened to the whole thing about uh, your subscriber uh, craft list being really long and you having to do two ships at once why is there only one ship on screen right now well there's a number of reasons for that one is the aforementioned this thing needs to be recorded now I'm in a rush I don't really have time to talk about two ships and uh, aforementioned 1230 at night the other thing is that this technically is two ships because it's not one person who made it this uh, craft the HMNZ Freiburg was made by Boom Boom Shake the Room, aka Mark William Raid, and Blurrent. It is a collaborative effort, and uh, it is very paid off. Very paid off. Blech. 12.30 at night, give me a break. It is, uh, their teamwork has paid off wonderfully. In the montage, you probably, preceding this, you probably saw it take on a number of very scary ships, among which is the Tur, like one of the v most scary ships in the game. And we'll get to that in a second. So, this, uh, if it uh, comes across clearly already that I'm quite the fan of this craft, while also hating it tremendously, well, that is in fact the case. So, what is this ship about? It is uh, yay big and yay expensive, so it's just over 200,000k materials, and uh, which is quite cheap, because what it delivers is nothing short of pretty damn amazing. So what's good about this? Like I tend to think of this ship as a dedicated battleship killer. This is a... Uh, it's kind of like the oceanic sci-fi equivalent of a tank destroyer a bit, because it goes up against like things armed with crams, things are, that are heavily armored and shielded, and it just tears them apart. It's very good at that. And uh, you'll notice that uh, it's got lots of scratches on it at the moment, and that is because... Actually, let's just fix that. There we go. Squeaky clean. Pristine. So, yeah, this ship is, uh, well, firstly, very pretty. You can see here it's got a little anchor made out of steam components and uh, APS connectors. And honestly, I think this is the only real good use of APS six-way connectors, because goodness knows, like, it's not really useful for anything else, apart from connecting APS components occasionally. And it's got a lovely shaping here. It's got these little decorative ammo racks raised uh, lovely superstructure right here it's got a life raft in the middle here which I didn't see before it's quite cool more life rafts over here white so you can see it it's got even got little little failing scums these are just these are, well these are just little what do you call it the little simple weapon auto cannons but just like the way it looks like a real life uh, phalanx sewers is just really cool it's got a satellite dish up here just, uh, yeah, yeah, so it's a very good looking craft, like, uh, Boom is very good at making craft pretty, and he's like, he's excelled himself right here, it's even with the little fantail I like. So, uh, there, there is that, it is very pretty. Yeah, the main draw of this thing is the fact that it's got three big turrets, each one firing a different kind of shell, and it's got a serious lamb system. And, uh, show you what I mean. There's a lot of lambs in here, so where are, is the lambs? Here is a lot of lambs, over here. And let's take you out of the water. There is... 
I believe there's more lamps somewhere around here. No, that's it. That's it. What? What? I thought this had more lamps. I thought this... Well, technically, this is four lamp systems all in all in one gap here. Well, actually, no, it isn't. 12.30 at night, and I didn't know lamps that well to begin with. Blech. So, yeah, got a very cunning lamp system. This thing is almost but not quite immune to cram barrages, which is uh, one of the reasons why I kind of hate it as well as love it, because uh, I've tested this thing repeatedly against the Skilla and the Naga, and that lamb's just... Eats cram shells for breakfast, and it doesn't do too badly against missile barrages as well. So yeah, it also has really good missile decoys, which is I something I keep missing in my test. But I'm assured by other people who have had a play around with this thing that um, where is it? Oh my god, it's even got little. Where is it? Where is it? These things. So variable thrusters, stick fists, radar boys. These things get fired up in the air, and they pull entire swarms of missiles along behind them. It's actually really hard to land missiles on this thing unless you fire them continuously. So there is that. It's very well protected against cram shells, against, um, against missiles. And it's also well armored and well shielded. So if we go over here and I hit the magic P button, You'll see here that uh, your average arm on the side of this thing is one, two, three, air gap, four layers of metal, is three layers of metal and air gap, which uh, I believe uh, Boom put that in uh, at my suggestion because this thing is a little bit vulnerable to heat shells, and we'll get to that in a little bit. And then what follows is a layer of metal and a layer of stone. So this thing is extraordinarily well armored actually. Like three layers of metal, air gap, and then more metal is nothing to be sneezed at. And it's got that almost, almost but not quite along its entire length. In fact, I believe, yeah, over here on the ammo, the armor gets even thicker. So heavy armor, stone, metal, and metal again. And uh, it's also well shielded, so I'm going to turn you off for a second. I'm going to find a shield and tweak its color. So alpha, whoop. And uh, then I'm going to spawn in something innocuous. I'm going to spawn in a marauder, and you'll see here that... What the? Okay, apply to all, please. There we go. Yeah, this thing has a lot of shields, and as you can see, the way they overlap is quite cunning. You've got even got shields... Where the hell is this one poking through? See, it's also got little spin blocks on the inside. Where are the knobs... See, see, you see here, this is good, very good shield placement, because this thing is poking out through this tiny gap between these two, and suddenly it's an impenetrable wall of shields, and double, uh, triple layered in the areas as well. In fact, quite consistently triple layered as well. It's even got shields around the lamp systems, and these are not weak shields, I should mention. Like, my usual trick with shields is just to spam lots of strength one shields, these are not that. These are strength three. Even, even uh, cram shells tend to have difficulty getting through three layers of strength three shields. I've seen some people say that uh, cram shells aren't bothered by shields at all. That is very false. Like at sufficient velocity and sufficient shield strength, they are indeed bothered by shields quite a bit. And let's turn that all, light all. Thank you. So yeah, very, it's very well defended, so it's not easy to kill with missiles, crams, APS, basically any form of kinetic weapon you are going to have a hard time killing this with. And um, part of that is that it's also quite fast, so if we uh, turn you on and turn off caps lock because the light is annoying me, at 4 minutes and 12.30 at night, spawn in the Marauder. This might be over too fast actually, so... Uh, this uh, this girl is going at uh, just shy of 25 meters per second, which is pretty decent for for a ship, honestly. And that is because it's got one, two, three, four. It has a whole deadly blade set in here. So this is reminiscent of a wellness python, which I reviewed quite some time ago. It's got central deadly blades right there. It's got a lot of propellers on the back. I mean, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, uh, 16, 20, 
23 propellers on the back for a ship that is about is about 136 meters long, which isn't huge. So yeah, it is fast, it's dodgy, it repairs itself very quickly. I, where are the repair bots on this thing? Because I believe it has more than a few. If I was a repair bot, where would I hide? I would hide, well, I'd hide right here. So you see right here, new, lots of repair bots, I think that is, what's that? That's missiles, whoops. So there's repair bots over there. I think there's more stashed around here somewhere. Yep, there's more. And I think it's kind of sneaked here, there, and everywhere throughout the whole ship. So it's good repair block placement. And I believe where they are at... Where are they at? Where are they at? Let's turn the UI on, because that'll be helpful. So if we're over here, here, repair bot, metal beam. So because of the... One, two... So you see that because of this layer of stone here, the... Repair bots and other bits and bits and bobs inside here are very safe from EMP. In fact, I believe metal, stone, stone. Yeah, the inner delicate workings are almost completely encased in stone. So, and that includes this, by the looks of it. So, stone, stone, stone goes all the way up here, and up here, in fact, is a layer of wood. So, good luck with EMP getting through that. So, it's quite, it's a. Uh, Boom tends to make very good armored hulls, and this is a, possibly the best of his work I've ever seen. He's gotten a lot better since the days I reviewed the Tanifa, which is the very first ship I ever reviewed in this series. So, that's very good. So, very, very hard to kill. But, and, and leading to that, you might notice that um, underneath the ship there is a lot of propellers. Um, uh, the team up of Boom and Blarant does like their PID. So this thing is, I believe the only reason this thing is even afloat because it's so compact and heavily armored is because of all these props down here going absolute mental. And you can see the fuel tick down uh, in the lower right. So very hard to sink. The only way to really sink this craft is to essentially almost kill it anyway. So if you want to kill this thing just by getting it to 80% and having it sink, you are out of luck. You are going to need to kill it dead. Or very least kill its engines. And, uh, so what? So we've talked a lot about how tanky this thing is, and that is the main... One of the main strengths of this thing is that it's just extraordinarily hard to kill. And I know, I've tested thoroughly, and even when I do manage to kill it, it is very difficult. Like, I upgraded the Naga specifically so it could take on this thing. And, um, it was still a close fight. It still took a very long time. So, onto the armament. The, it's got quite a few torpedoes underneath, I believe. Yeah, it has, well, this is not something I didn't really noticed much, really, but it has these ridiculously big torpedoes, which is a mixture of EMP and a lot of explosive. Possibly overkill with explosive. Could change a few more of those to EMP, but otherwise, very well designed. Regulators for extra range, ballast tanks, lots of propellers, target protection guidance, so savvy torpedoes. And it's also got torpedo interceptors, and these things, I gotta tell you, are, uh, well, a little bit larger than the ones I usually use, but uh, they work extremely well. In fact, what you might, I don't, I don't know if it'll show up in the montage that uh, will be at the start of this episode, but these little torpedo turrets, well, counter torpedo turrets, these things have a habit of once the, well, there's no torpedoes in the water, these things fly out of the water and take missiles out as well. So they're actually quite efficient, quite multi-purpose, and quite safe beneath the ship here because, remember, triple shielding back here, and a lamb system that if these miss anything, the lambs will take care of it. So that is uh, very cunningly done down here. It's a uh, well thought out both on top and below. And onto the guns, which definitely... Well, no, before we get to the guns, hey, hey, we've got more missiles in here. They're quite large, quite large, and they're frags, of course, so... Not tremendously wild missiles, except for their size. They do have proximity warheads, though, which is... Actually, that is quite wacky, because, like, I don't know, usually bother with these, but, uh, you know what? Whatever works. And I'm not sure whether these would be really good against uh, really fast aircraft, because I haven't really tested that thoroughly. Uh, Four-mentioned little Sea Whiz guns, which are mostly for decoration. 
And finally, onto the guns themselves. And these, I like how these guns are set up because it's nice and simple and straightforward. And I'll show you the Tetris right here. Because here, very tough little armor cap, these things are not armored themselves, I should say, which is a bit of a weakness. But uh, it's big shells, by the way. It's These are six meter long. How big are, How big is this gun again? Uh, 400 millimeters. I believe all the turrets are like this. So, big shells, very big shells indeed. Uh, nice steady rate of fire, 30 rounds per minute, so every two seconds it pops on off. And I believe this one is a squash head, a very big, scary squash head, I should mention. So, I'll show you the numbers right here. Hell of a wallop to them, and even decent explosive damage. Uh, good shell speed and very good range. So, that's that one. I will just do this so we're not confused. So, that is so squash head in the front. And we've got what have we got here? We have the disruptor gun here. And this is quite cunning. This is a combination disruptor and smoke. So stabilize and fin volley help it to cancel out how inaccurate the disruptor conduit head is. Lots of EMP. So EMP strength 316, so which means that like even against strong shields, this will take them out in one shot. Especially since it fires two of these at once. It's got inertial fuse, it's got a smoke, so this simultaneously takes shields down and also shuts down LAM systems, which is very good if you're using disruptors, because LAMs love disruptor shells. They just, they snap them out of the air like a crocodile snapping potato chips. Where did that analogy come from? Before mentioned 1230 at night. I'm gonna keep saying that because I need to remind myself to stay awake. Okay, so we've got a squash, we've got a squash gun, and we have a disruptor gun, and way in the back here we have the last one, and I believe this is the other uh, new hotness that's flying around the internet. It is a high explosive hollow point, so it does a crap ton of kinetic damage, and I've I've gotten very fond of hollow points myself in like recent times because, quite frankly, these are. What the? There's another gun on here. I don't know where it is. Do, 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 do. I need to go find it. Anyway, so crap ton. So once shields are down. Uh, this is gonna this makes a real mess out of armor and because well you see it for yourself over 5,000 explosive damage as well this this gun finishes the job so to speak and it uh, really makes a mess of the poor Naga's hull which I'm a little bit sad about but hey what, what can you do and uh, where is that other gun because I know it's around here somewhere hello where are you is it just decoration or something there is a 60mm gun somewhere on this craft that I want to see. Because it. Oh, there it is! It's part of the decoration. It's this little crane thing here. Ah, oh, that's adorable. I love it. Oh, I love it! Anyway, I might be gushing over the ship a little bit too much, so we'll move on to the weaknesses of it. And, um. Its weaknesses tend to come from its strengths. This is actually quite a specialized craft. I mentioned before, it's a battleship killer. It's good against things which are big on the surface and heavily armored and shielded. That is, this thing is a... This thing is a militarized, well, hard nut designed to crack other hard nuts. This is essentially the ocean-going equivalent of a tank. Because that's what it is. It's very tanky and it's designed to bust open other tanky targets. So one of the problems with being designed like a tank is that it is very compact. You go through here, there is virtually no space wasted in here. There's like there's a little air gap in here. There's a little air gap in here. Tiny ones. It doesn't even use air pumps for the most part. It relies on the PID system to stay afloat, and you just you run along its entire length, and it is very very solid. Now. That is good, because it means means the whole thing can be quite small, and you save costs due to using less structural materials. The bad news is, is that it is vulnerable to heat, and to demonstrate that, I will jump out of the ship now. It's even got this little... just I, I never do this myself, but I do appreciate it when people send me ships with, like, you know, with cool-looking interiors, because it's something I never bothered doing. 
So it's like I get to see a world where it's uh, where it's like uh, I get to see a prettier world. So anyway, so uh, one of the main problems with being so compact, and in particular with having a very compact ship with unarmored internal turrets, is that you are vulnerable to anything that can pierce through all the defenses. And this ship is well shielded, it's well armored, but uh, even that has weaknesses. And I will show you that by showing this turret. And I discovered this completely by accident. Because I was testing out various kinds of APS shells, so just something that wasn't like Hesh, because I've mentioned before, like, Hesh isn't incredibly overpowered, but it is just overpowered enough. So, these are 500mm Hesh, well, no, Hesh, heat smoke rounds. So this is the shell I'm using, it is maximum gauge, and it is quite powerful. And I threw up the Freiburg just to test it and see how it does, and to my surprise, something like this happened. Actually, I am going to do this. What? No, not what I meant to do. Play, and you... You go away for a second. You go away over there. And then I am going to pause the game. I'm going to spawn in a Freiburg on the other team. Yes, I, I plan these things out, you see. Dumpty dumpty dum. And she does look she looks really swiggity in uh, steel strider colours, I have to say. So this So there's those things going, those pull missiles like no one's business. And are we too up? Uh, screw it, so hopefully you'll see what happens when this happens. Unless that air gap has folded it completely. Hmm. That air gap might have saved her. No, no, it didn't. So what happened there was, and gee, she re did I mention she repairs fast? She really does. So those aren't super strong heat shells. I'll show you the penetration metric on them. So these things have a penetration metric of 81, which isn't actually incredibly high by heat standards. It can go into the hundreds quite easily if you really go wacky, if you do something like this, for instance. These are just... this is... Uh, the HE special factor is set to about half, and does have a high particular... Uh, a high uh, particle count over penetration factor, but uh, it popped that turret. so. Just uh, so you can see it again, and just uh, the the Freiburg is quite vulnerable to heavy-duty heat shells because simply because it's so comp. Yep, there it goes. There it goes again. Like, admittedly, it'll take more than that to kill her completely, but once all the guns are taken down, it's that's really it. She can't fight. Those are her main weapons. Yep, and there it goes again. Admittedly, these are pretty powerful heat cannons, but yeah. Yep. So we're gonna do that for a second. And the same applies for particle cannons set to piercing against the Freiburg, because uh, annoyingly, there's still no counter to particle cannons at all. And so, I tested this thing against a particularly scary uh, lightning hood craft called the Tarawat. I'm not going to spawn it in now, but... Anything with a piercing particle cannon, particularly the uh, rather meta, like, multi-spammy beam ones that, as you find on the Tarawat... Is it called? Yeah, the Tarawat. Or, my favorite, the one on the perforator, is going to pop these turrets, and there's... I've actually talked to Boom about that, and there's not an awful lot he can do without really cutting down the fire rate of these guns, so it's kind of just something you'll, I don't know, we have to live with with this design. So, what else? And also, I should mention that because this is a specialized battleship killer, it's not good against fast aircraft, and I will demonstrate that by spawning in something irritating. I'll spawn in the Tachyon. And uh, something else to keep in mind is that this has no laser defense at all. It has no smoke, it has no laser shields. Easy thing to add, by the way. 
but uh, the lightning hoods are going to give this thing a real problem. As you can see, that laser is tearing the ship apart. Though I'm wondering where the hell that smoke came from. I think it does have smoke somewhere, but I'm not sure where. In particular, like very fast targets like the Tachyon, or even worse, the Hypatos, and some of the more annoying Scarlet Dawncraft will kill this thing. So, the Freyberg, powerful as she is, she's not invincible. She does repair blindingly fast, though. So, keep an eye on. That's another thing. She does. She is a little bit of a material hog. Uh, not. She's not terrible. If she doesn't take heavy damage, she doesn't really eat that much. But uh, as you see here, boom. So she is ticking down just a little bit at a time, I think. So is she just like two? Is she going to eat some more? Let's spawn in something again. Let's spawn in a plunderer just so we can hover over her. Let's see. Yeah, so she is burning through materials because she does have steam engines and a lot of ammunition producers. So be aware of that if you want to play with the Freyberg. She is a hungry, hungry girl. You need to feed her well. And uh, I should mention, like, who did who on this craft as well, because she is very pretty, she's very well made, and it's a... Basically, it's a lesson learned for me, is that if you're having trouble with this game, and that's entirely understandable, it's a very hard game, feel free to ask for help, because uh, Boom and Blaren tossed this uh, blueprint back and forth between them for weeks, and the results speak for themselves, because uh, Boom, as, and it showed up even in like his older stuff, the Tanifa and uh, other ships, which uh, he's had me look at, but uh, I am not going to make videos on, He's very good at making armored hulls and laser systems, and Blarant is, I believe, uh, he's tweaked things here, there, and everywhere, but mostly the guns are his handiwork, so well done to both of you there. You've made a really formidable, beautiful craft, and if I, I am highly tempted to spawn this thing into my own campaign playthrough when I eventually get enough money, but uh, there's other things that need to be spawned in first. So, that is basically it, and I should, I would not uh, be able to sign this review off, which is already going on longer than I expected it to, really. I guess I did have a lot to say about this craft. Is that uh, she only costs around 228,159 uh, resources, and she can take on a tur. And I will set this up properly, so you can see. Mostly because she's got a stupid repair rate, and so once the turret takes down her shields, it actually doesn't bother her in the slightest. So there is the turret, our old nemesis. Because Did I mention I hate this thing? Because I hate this thing. I know I'm not the only one either. So we spawn way over there, and uh, we're going to see how fast the Freyberg can kill it. Because she can. I've seen her do it, and my jaw was on the floor. When that happened, and just for eh, what, uh, what color scheme do we want? What color scheme, Onyx. Onyx one. Nah, Grey Talons. I like the Grey Talons color scheme. It's like, it's quite earthy. It's quite cool. So, if I haven't started the cool music, now would be a good time. And of course, faulty detection systems. And the game is lagging quite nicely. Thank you. That could have been bad. This is where multiple shields. This is where the fact she's quite dodgy is coming quite uh, coming quite in handy because those are uh, massive. That massive volley occasionally misses, and that is very handy for the Freyberg. And of course, uh, uh, I guarantee one of the developers is going to see this, and one of the turrets on the turret is going to be changed to heat. In which case. All our dreams are over. So let's see here, the the Freyberg's at 98%. She can do this, by the way. I'm not ending the video until we see good evidence of that. Guns are still alive. She's taking damage. If 
defenses are mostly holding. I think she's actually... Yep, she is actually frying some of the... What, what did I say? She's frying the shields now, so... Yep, now is the tipping point. Because once the shields on the turret are down, thanks to that massive disruptor gun, you can get in there and you can get meaty with Hesh and hollow point explosive. As you can see here, the rate of fire on the Freiburg is actually powerful enough and constant enough to pin the turret in place. And this is a 420,000 material massive battleship that's almost a fifth of a kilometer long, which is impressive to say the least. So, basically, I've... So, I can... In other words, I can finally get around to making a Most Wanted on the tour because I have a ship that can demonstrate... Admittedly not made by me, but I have a ship that can demonstrate how to do it. It is not impossible to take on a tour with a surface vessel that is... Well, less than half the cost of it. You just need good guns, good shields, good armor. And several almost a month of free time in order to make and test the thing, I suppose. Oh boy. Let's check the health again, and uh, Freiburg's 100%, Tur's at 95%. Freiburg's into her groove now. Sooner or later, yeah, the Hesh is really doing work now. See what's happening here, armor getting peeled off layer by layer by the hollow points. Disruptors have done their work, and the Tur's turrets are now at risk. So I could watch the Tur die over and over, because I have yet to build a ship myself, and I mean a ship as opposed to a submarine or anything uh, slightly more meta that can take a Tur one-on-one -on -one and win. I've built ships that can take it on two-on-one -on -one and win. But then again, they don't get prizes for that. What? Wait, did they take out the engines? I wonder if that's a thing. I can still hear them, so... No, probably not. See how the Fre Freiburg is doing? You see, having a good repair rate is actually your best defense against disruptor shells, like what the Tur has. Because you can see here, or failing that, a good land system, because I think a lot of those disruptors are actually getting fried before they can hit shields. Yep, like that one, for instance, I think. Hold on. Yeah, these are dis disruptors. Yeah, I think both of them just got swatted straight out of the air. So, uh, combination layered shields and a good land system actually works pretty well against disruptor rounds, particularly big ones like what the Tur has. Yeah. As much as I hate lambs, I've got to admit that they can be incredibly effective. I mean, just look, the Freiburg is winning straight up. wonder if the Tur's... Uh, nope, the Tur's own torpedo racks are not doing well. They're in fact doing very badly. Where are we at? Tur's at 80%. She's probably going to sink before she despawns, actually. And yes, I am actually going to keep the video running until everyone sees for sure that the Tur is going to die. And uh, we'll see here, and the Freiburg has eaten a lot of material. I believe... I forget what she starts with. She starts with something ridiculous, like 200,000, but... Uh, like, she can eat every cent she has, and she'll still cost less than a tur, so... And most of that was in, I think, the opening shots where she actually took damage. Yeah. Die, you annoying... Scandinavian namesake. Nothing against Scandinavians, by the way, I just have a problem with the Tur. I have a grudge against this thing ever since I first spawned it in and it killed... Well... My faith in the... the, the my faith in... Neater, having ships that I'll enjoy fighting. I'm, I'm straight up rambling now. Because now it is one o'clock in the morning. Come on, 
you can do it. Yeah. The tour is pretty much down. It's crippled. Yep, there goes the ammo storage. Oh yeah, this is not going to last much longer. Look at this. Look at what Hesh and Hollow Point does once it's through shields. Jeez. Let's go have a look at the Freiburg again. Doing quite well. Yeah, now you see it's just that Hollow Point cannon doing pretty much all the work. These cute little auto cannons just doing their thing right there. They're not actually doing much, but yeah. Yeah, I think these missiles are actually anti-air only, which is interesting. Are we gonna get to see the turd despawn? Yes, we are. Yeah, one of the turrets already got popped. Two more to go. Shouldn't take long. The turret is one of my favorite targets to test weapons on, simply because if you can get through this thing's shields and its lands and its armor, it means it's a good weapon. It's simple as that. Also, the crazy amount of smoke this thing has. The turret is not easy to kill with lasers, but against a dedicated battleship killer like uh, it does, uh, doesn't do so well. Also, I believe that, uh, I'm gonna need to double check this, but I believe the Freiburg, her targeting is set to random blocks, which is by far the best way to do it these days, because, uh, aim point selection, aiming for vulnerable bits, tends to not work very well, especially against the Tur, because, uh, its AI mainframes and its ammo are in hard to reach places. So, like, one right at the very end, right at the bow, right at the stern, and right in the most heavily armored bit. How the hell is this thing still afloat? You can see that the entire deck's been stripped off. Yep, and I believe, yep, she's too damaged. And away she goes. She's despawning. Yep. We will see you in hell. And I mean hell as in H-E-L V. Or Helheim, I guess. We will see you in the Norse afterlife. Oh, no, 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 hell. What am I talking about? The Tur just died in combat. She goes to Valhalla, whether I like it or not. Phew. I cannot tell you how good it feels to watch a Tur die. It really feels good. So, yeah, the Freyberg. She's a hell of a craft, and let's just check, so 66,000 materials is what she was left with. What the hell? Okay, let's um, turn that on. Yeah, she starts with a... She actually only ate... Okay, that is uh, that is impressive. She ate uh, just over... She ate just over, like, 40,000 material killing a tur. So that would bring her cost up to around 260,000, which is still way cheaper than the tur. So, bravo. <laughs> Applause for you right there. So, uh, the Freiburg, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just reviewed her very early in the morning, and uh, I should probably go to bed straight after this, but uh, I've had two cups of coffee, and I'm not tired yet. So, I don't know. I guess I'll play from the depths until I fall over. And a uh, good way to spend uh, Sunday morning, isn't it? So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And we'll see you next time in the next From the Depths Subscriber Craft Review. Hopefully I won't do that one at stupid o'clock in the morning. Farewell! <laughs>